Now the problem with it here is the effect is is obviously far too far too harsh uh, for the moment. What I want to do is is actually keep the face um, as it was in the original. So I just want everything else to be sort of glowed up and keep the uh, keep the face as a, a sort of centre of attention. So to do that, I either want to use a mask or uh, or a mat. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to use a uh, an image mask. Add image mask here, and it's asking me what I want to use as my image mask. Well, now there's a good question. So let's come into our library up here, and I'm going to come to my image units over here, and we're going to have a look at the radial gradient, and just dump that in a layer on itself. Uh, just going to adjust radial two. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the luminance values of this radial gradient to uh, to mask out our glow layer. So let's take that up here. Now, if we come into the inspector, the inspector's got more controls um, than the heads-up display has got. So the inspector's got this lovely little thing called center, which is where our center is. So wouldn't it be nice to be able to track the, the center point of our radial gradient there to the, the track we got from, from Mocha. Well, luckily we can. Let's uh, come to our eye track. I'm just gonna hit F5 and F6 just to bring up our timeline here and come into our keyframes. And let's just have a look at the position keyframes. Now, of course, there's many ways of doing this and I'm gonna show you a few different ways of, uh, of taking this data and applying it to different filters and effects. Uh, one way is just to take these keyframes, copy them with uh, Apple C, or up into the uh, edit copy. And then let's come to our, uh, come to our radial gradient here, and add a keyframe to it first, to the center point here. So if we come to our keyframe editor here, we can have a look at the animated ones, and we've got our radial gradient center X and Y. And we can just paste that data with Apple V or go up to edit paste. And now you can see that our radial gradient is perfectly mimicking the track that we got from Mocha. Okay, so how do we now use this as our as our mask? Well, let's um just gonna hit F6 and F5 again to now bring back our layers. And I'm gonna just order this up a little bit just so we keep a bit of order. I'm gonna create a new group and just call this mats and I can put my radial gradient in the mats there and just bring that down to the bottom. So all I really have to do is take my radial gradient, just click and drag it into my image mask here. Not made any difference. So let's come into my image mask, change what the source channel is going to be. Of course at the moment it's set to alpha and we don't have an alpha on this radial gradient, we want it set to luminance. And at the moment it's just keeping in everything within the face area. So let's invert that. And now we can see, we turn our soft glow on and off. It's leaving the face untouched. We've got a little glow going on in the rest of the image. So if we wanted to, we could even change that soft glow now from screen to, oh, to overlay. That gives a, a bit of a different, different look. Maybe take the opacity down on that a little bit. Take to 50%. There we go. And we'll probably come back and tweak that in a little bit. But the next thing we want to do is I want to, um, I've called this 80s trash. And the reason for that is I want to put, add a bit of, uh, I mean the 80s are back in a, in a big way, uh, for better or worse. So what I want to do is add a nice bit of uh, neon or actually chromatic aberration onto our, and onto our camera here. So let's just duplicate our soft glow layer up here. Instead of soft glow, I'm gonna call this, uh, um, call this prism. Take off my directional blur, so just delete that. And I'm gonna add another filter. And this filter is under the blur again, and it's prism. Let's turn our blend mode to normal here so we can see what this is doing a bit better. Turn my prism on. And you can see it's just separating out the, uh, the color channels there. Lovely. So just swap my angle up there a little bit. 
Now you can also see that it's because it's separating out the different channels, we're getting a bit of um, gap down at the bottom there. So I'm just going to come into the properties of the whole layer, just scale the layer up a little bit. And now when we dump this into uh, into screen mode, not only have we got the little prism effect here, but because we've scaled up the image, it's sort of spilling out a little bit more. And of course, we've still got the same image mask going from our radial gradient that we use with the uh, with the Mocha Tracker. Now, of course, there's other ways of using that that data. So if we take a look at, uh, at the prism here and look at the filters here. We've got an angle. Now, when we took out the uh, the tracking data for Mocha, we also took out not just position data. Let's come into our eye track here, F5 and F6 to bring up our keyframe editor again. Not only did we get position data, we also got rotation and ooh, not shear. We also got scale as well. Uh, so let's take the uh, the rotation data because uh, at the moment we've got that little um, prism effect, but it's looking slightly dead because the angle doesn't change at all. So let's just take that rotation data, copy that, come into prism filter here. And again, we're just going to add a, uh, a keyframe to our angle here so we can actually see it in the keyframe editor. Turn this to animated. Come to our front here and just paste in those keyframes. So now you'll see we've got our angle changing very, very slightly as it goes through. But the problem is it's overwritten our original value. So we haven't kept the same effect that we, uh, we were after before.